Hey, what's up everybody, Ali Tarafter, back with a brand new video. Today's topic, I want to discuss the kind of and fundamental of budgeting properly. See, the thing is, on a credit repair journey, it's very difficult sometimes to budget accordingly. The reason why, it's because we have bills to pay, you know, we have to take care of some of the obligations that we have, and sometimes, unforeseen circumstances just so happen, right? It could be a family emergency, it could be things that you need for your kids, it could be something for your parents, your grandparents, whatever the case. The most important thing and the fundamental concept behind this video is to understand the processes to take so that you can structure a budget that works according to a credit repair process. Now, one of the biggest factors of credit repair, you know, depending on which route you choose or what are some of the directions that you're willing to take, it's understanding the costs along the way and what are the costs of not getting it done ahead of schedule. So there's a sacrifice you're making essentially if you're not really tackling your credit objectives. And then there's also the opportunities that you get, the instant gratification, which is, hey, instead of paying for credit services or credit repair, you know, I can just buy myself certain A, B, C items. Whereas on the other side, you do credit repair and you're sacrificing the A, B, C items, but in a day what happens is the balance actually gives you financial benefit. So when it comes to budgeting, what you have to do is Make yourself accountable to creating an income and expense report every month. And this includes for the whole household, right? What happens is we're not taught this kind of information in school. The knowledge is not given in educational institutions. And the reason why it's because educational institutions, and if you look at the history behind education, uh, it was used to form employees, right? It wasn't used to form individuals who would kind of think for themselves and create something for themselves. And with that, given the fact, it's very critical that you as an individual uh, kind of go outside of the box, right? And in order to do that, sometimes you gotta get really uncomfortable. So budgeting is one of those things that you have to do to get really uncomfortable, right? For example, you're sitting at a dinner table and sometimes what happens is, hey, your, your payment is really high, your, your debt is really high, you're carrying a huge balance. And there are certain things that you wanna do. Right, it happens to the best of us. For instance, like in 2008, when I was counseling many different families uh, and I was doing credit settlements and working with them to restructure some of their loans that they had, uh, the toughest conversations were around expenses, right? The toughest conversations were around the sacrifices that they had to make. So for example, imagine you want to take your wife out to dinner. And unfortunately, you know, you want to take her and treat her well. So that means you want to take her to a fancy spot with good food, uh, you know, probably a three course meal and all that kind of stuff. And what happens is we're so caught up right, with conformity about like, hey, I got to make sure I treat her like that. Uh, I, I got to spend that kind of money. And, you, you know, you, you want to be able to kind of like give her the best things in the world. Uh, but the reality is, right, society is so conform and looking at those things as a must that we forget to do the special little things. Uh, they can financially benefit us, you know, I'm not trying to be really cheap or stingy, but I'm just giving you some examples, right? And down the long road, you know, if you look in the future, what's going to happen is the benefit is there, right? Because what's happening is you're able to treat her to so many different spots on a regular basis instead of these one-off things and sacrificing your financial well-being in the process. So think about some of these things that you have to do, right? So on a conversation sake, when you're sitting out at a dinner table, even with your kids, you know, I encourage you to do this because they're not getting this type of education in school. They can only get it from you. So take the time to sit down and say, hey, look, how much income do we make this week or this month? What are some of our expenses? Let's calculate that. Let's see what we can cut down. Right, a lot of people say, well, you don't have to cut down, you have to earn more. The problem is, if you're mentally stressed, right? If you're mentally stressed because you have so much bills to pay, you're not thinking straight to earn more. You got to start with a foundation. See, a lot of these gurus teach you, hey, don't worry about, you know, the expenses, make a lot, make a lot. The issue is, you know, like I said, if your psychological state of mind is not clear, you don't have some sort of clarity in terms of the direction you want to take because you're not comfortable, right? It's the same as buying a a duplex and renting one side out and you paying half the mortgage and all of a sudden that tenant moves out and you got all sorts of headaches to manage because now it's coming out of your pocket, right? It's because you haven't really cut down on the costs. Whereas if you come across an eightplex and, and you have two tenants move out, 
You don't have those headaches. You can think clearly. You can figure out a way to get better tenants. That's a long game. The same as a budget situation, right? The same as about the income and expense situation. The perspective here is try to figure out ways that you can look at restructuring your budget. I'm not saying cut down on all the good stuff you have in life, right? Reward yourself for the deeds that you're doing that's actionable towards progressively growing your wealth, right? So for example, if you're right now in this month, you know, your expenses are like $1,200 on things that you see, it's not really giving you financial benefit. Well, you gotta find creative ways to get the same leisure and pleasure from that instead of spending 1200 and maybe spend 600 whereas another 600 is put towards a way for an emergency fund right or, or something that will help you grow on a perspective of wealth so those are some of the conversations that you might willing to have with your family your kids your spouse uh you know it's very difficult right uh for example I'll give you I'll give you another one you know christmas comes around everybody's just so caught up with like hey i gotta get my kids a gift or i gotta get my grandchildren a gift and it's heartbreaking to see some of these old folks because they don't have the money right to kind of like buy like gifts for like 12 grandchildren and what ends up happening is they stay home and they do a call because they feel guilty of not showing up for dinner without any gifts that's ridiculous society shouldn't be like that at all and the fact that we frown upon that is ridiculous and disgusting at the same time, right? Where is the mentality gone? See, advertising and marketing is one thing, but to make somebody feel guilty for not giving presents during Christmas because their pension funds won't allow it because we followed a systematic protocol of a government to pay them taxes so we get like cents on the dollar at the end of the day, there's no justification towards that grandparent feeling guilty about not showing up for dinner because they don't have gifts. So there's little things that you can do. You, you change the mindset from spending thousands of dollars in gifts to doing a dinner, you know, cooking together, spending time with the family, talking about wealth, talking about growth, talking about the future, what makes them happy. There's a lot of better things that can come out of a conversation when you talk about these type of situations, right? So there's no need to vilify those individuals that are trying to be frugal or safe because what's gonna happen is they'll have a clear perspective and thinking about what to do next and they'll do it better than the person who's stressed out and attempting to do it. And another thing is you guys are having your tax refunds coming in, right? And a lot of you guys will say, oh, I'm gonna pay some of the debts down, I'm gonna use some of that money to reward myself, go for a vacation and so on and so forth. Uh, my biggest thing is, what if you don't touch a penny from that and you save it aside for a rainy day? The confidence that you have financially, just having a good amount of that money stored away is gonna help you get across a lot of humps in the future. Right? It's gonna give you some sort of perpetual habits of building wealth and savings the long run. And I think that's more important than looking at instant gratification. And we talked about this many times together, right? So I just wanted to share that with you guys, you know, in terms of budgeting, in terms of making sure that you guys follow some sort of system, uh, you know, on a month to month basis, you know, make a, a day a week that you sit down with the family, with your spouse, whoever the case, and you say, hey, look, Wednesdays are a day, right? Wednesdays are a day, we're gonna sit down, during dinner, we're gonna come up with an agenda, we'll dine, we'll talk, and then we'll go out, you know? So what's gonna happen is you build a systematic process to kind of be accountable to each other, right? The most successful couple in the world is that which knows how to handle finances well, they get together well, they understand each other very well in terms of financial habits and the things they need to do to build prosperity and wealth, and they support each other during the whole process, right? And the most unsuccessful couples are the ones that are extremely materialistic and get dissatisfied for the littlest thing if they don't get it. Right? So you have to think about these type of things. And I'm coming from experience and I've seen these things in families from 2008 to 2011. I've seen so many different things during that business that I had when it came to settlements and uh, you know, looking at divorces and looking at people splitting because of their most ridiculous things. So I just wanted to share that feedback with you guys in today's video. Uh, you know, it's more of an educational ph ph uh, phenomenon about taking your family, aligning them to the financial values that you're looking forward to establish and making sure you follow a protocol and a system to follow that uh, the financial habit building uh, journey, right? Both, all of you guys actually, your, your family, your kids, your, your wife, your husband, whatever the case, education is so critical. I have a student, her name is Lita, and I'm going to give her a shout out. She was watching my videos and she applied some of these things and she fixed her husband's credit. She's a senior, right? 
and she's looking to build her own credit repair business. And I'm gonna guide her through the whole process. And that's such an encouraging thing. She can sit down with her grandchildren and teach them about financial education because they never get it at school. So these are some of the things that you should take into your agenda when it comes to budgeting. It's not just a question of just doing things right. It's a question of having intense conversations that lead to critical thinking about how to shift your mind or your, or your sense of understanding towards something that'll give you a lot more clarity and give you some sort of direction on what to take uh, when it comes to making your next move or the next transaction, right? You don't have to impress anybody, right? You buy these fancy cars, these homes, there's nothing wrong with living in an apartment at the beginning. You have to build your wealth. Some people live in an apartment, they have a couple of million dollars in their bank account, right? Listen, society says one thing, and that's fine. You know, I'm not against anybody out there who's marketing, advertising, who's trying to build the wealth, who's trying to satisfy themselves in the different ways that they feel is important for them. But the biggest thing for me to you is, look, if you're starting off, if you're trying to budget, if you're trying to save, or at least trying to figure out a way to build a lot of wealth, then the first step is don't satisfy anybody but yourself, right? And if your inner happiness comes from understanding what I just explained to you and going against the grain so you can do everything possible in the long run, and because it's the long game at the end of the day, then so be it. Do that, all right? So I hope this video gave you some clarity, some understanding about what are some of the directions that I encourage you to take. Remember, have a budgeting conversation at least once a week with your family. Think about some of the things that you can look and restructure in terms of expenses. Spend more time loving each other by educating each other and supporting each other on the habits of wealth and prosperity. And of course, your happiness and health is more important as well. So I hope this video helped. Once again, this is Ali Tarafter, your guide and mentor. Hey, if you're new to this channel, don't forget to subscribe and turn that bell icon on. Give it a thumbs up if you like this video. Share some of the things that you feel that I missed maybe in this video, or if you like what I've said, uh, you know, what are some of the steps that you'll take with your family in terms of a discussion when it comes to dinner conversations. So leave it below in the comment section. Once again, I'll lead to Rafter. I look forward to seeing you guys next time. Bye for now.